Hey, welcome back everyone. And now we're going to move on to another movie I saw in the last week of 2017, Bright. This is a Netflix movie written by Max Landis, directed by David Ayer, and starring Will Smith and Joel Edgerton. This movie is set in Los Angeles in what appears to be kind of a parallel universe. I think it's not very clear. It's virtually identical to our world, except that we share it with orcs and elves and centaurs and fairies, and apparently dwarves as well, although they're only mentioned and not seen. Will Smith plays Daryl Ward, who is a Los Angeles police officer that has been forced to partner up with the department's diversity hire, Nick Jacoby. Jacoby is played by an unrecognizable Joel Edgerton and is the first orcish police officer. And one night, during what should have been a very routine call, they run into a whole lot of dead people and a strange little elf girl named Tika, who has a magic wand. And it's up to Ward and Jacoby to protect Tika and the wand from a whole lot of very bad people. So this movie was written by a mediocre screenwriter who peaked early with Chronicle and hasn't even come close to that level of greatness since, but he still has a job because his last name is Landis. And he's yet another asshole in a long line of Hollywood assholes that has been accused of sexual assault. And I can't say I'm surprised. Something about that guy, I could never quite put my finger on it, but something about him always rubbed me the wrong way. And now I know what it was. And it was directed by the man who gave us the absolute mess that is Suicide Squad. So, combining those two things together, I went into this movie with pretty low expectations. This movie met my expectations. Landis has not improved, Ayer has not improved, although I will say this movie is at least better edited than Suicide Squad, I will give it that. But it's still pretty bad, and... Right off the bat, before the movie even properly begins, first thing you see after the Netflix logo is the name of the production company behind this movie, which is apparently Trigger Warning Entertainment. So right off the bat, I'm thinking, okay, so this movie was made by assholes. And Netflix apparently spent $90 million on this movie. It doesn't show. One of the first things we see in this movie is Ward and Jacoby taking a shortcut through the Elvish district of Los Angeles, which is the rich part of town because the elves are apparently the one percenters, and there is a divider in the middle of the road, and on that divider is a computer-generated field of grass with some kind of a gold barricade around it, and oh god, it looks so fake. It looks like something out of a PlayStation 2 game. It's bad. And when they get called to the house where they eventually meet Tika the Elf, the dead bodies in this house look like they were bought off the clearance rack at the spirit store at the end of last Halloween. I mean, just, where did all this $90 million go? I, not into the props. The graffiti in the opening credits does look very good, so maybe that's where all the money went. I don't know. The dialogue in this movie is really not good especially the very final dialogue sequence at the end, which has Ward and Jacoby talking to the feds, and Ward is telling his partner, hey, just keep quiet, only speak if they ask you a question, and just answer their question, and then shut the hell up. But of course, Jacoby is way too honest, so he just starts blurting out everything that's happened, and at first it's kind of funny. Like, okay, good joke. But then it just keeps going and going and going and going, and oh my god, the joke was dead two minutes ago. Why are you still talking? And considering this parallel universe that these characters exist in, there is remarkably little world building going on here. Instead, we're just kind of thrown into this already built world and we're just expected to know what the hell is going on. Really, all we know is about 2,000 years ago, there was some Dark Lord and now some crazy SLs are trying to bring this Dark Lord back because... reasons. And yeah, that's about it. And I did not really understand why, in a universe with orcs and elves and fairies and all that stuff, they're surprised to find a magic wand. Like, is magic rare in this universe? And why? And how? 
Could we explain some of this, please? Nope, doesn't explain shit. And the hilarious thing is, Netflix actually released a supplementary video on YouTube that explains the history of this world, which is what the movie should have done. And even this video doesn't explain everything, it's only about two minutes long, but it's still something. And I should not have to watch a supplementary video just to understand what the hell is going on in your movie. The movie should be able to stand on its own. If it can't, you done goofed. One of the most bizarre things in this movie, there is this establishing wide shot of Los Angeles at dusk. And there's a dragon flying through the sky. No one reacts to this. Dragons are never mentioned again. And the whole time Ward and Jacoby are dealing with orcish gangs and Mexican gangs and crazy ass elves, I'm sitting here thinking, could we go back to the fact that there was a dragon in the goddamn sky over Los Angeles? Why is nobody concerned about this? No one is the least bit worried that that dragon is going to start crashing into skyscrapers or burning people alive or swooping down and eating motherfuckers. Like, no one is the least bit concerned about the goddamn dragon. Why? Like, at the very least, you think air traffic control at LAX would have a problem with the fact that there is a goddamn dragon in the flight path. This movie is just a little bit silly. I mean, you got the dragons, you have centaurs instead of mounted police. Really, uh, this little elf girl, Tika, who's played by Lucy Fry, spends a good chunk of the movie doing kind of a half-assed impression of Mila Jovovich from The Fifth Element until the third act when all of a sudden she just starts acting normal for no goddamn reason. And the elves are constantly jumping and flipping and spinning around in these physics-defying ways, especially when it's completely unnecessary. And of course, there's a magic wand and a dark lord and something about the end of the world. There's a Mexican gang called Altamira, which is led by some guy in a wheelchair with an ostomy bag. No, for real. We have various fantasy creatures that are used as a metaphor for racial prejudice in probably the dumbest way possible. Jacoby's fellow officers put a kick me sign on his back. Because apparently all the humans in this universe are perpetually 12 years old. And despite all of these fantasy elements and that bit about the Dark Lord that happened 2,000 years ago, this world seems to have pretty much the exact same history as our world, with, like, the same major historical events. There's a character that references the Alamo, the same architecture, the same technology. Like, how is that even possible? And with all this ridiculous shit going on, it seems like this movie should be a spoof, and yet we're meant to take it seriously. And I just can't. Now, supposedly, David Ayer made several changes to this script while he was filming the movie, and I did find a copy of what is supposedly the original script online, and it's not good, it still has a lot of problems, but had they stuck closer to this script, there are a few issues with the movie that would have been fixed. For one thing, I thought Ward and Jacoby's relationship was handled much better. Ward was a lot less of an asshole and a much more likable guy. And it also explains a couple of things that were not explained in the actual movie, like the rarity of magic wands. There's just one minor bit in there. It's two lines of dialogue. It's Jacoby says to Ward, have you ever seen a magic wand before? And Ward says, well, yeah, I've seen that broken one they got at the Smithsonian. And that right there, just... Two lines of dialogue clearly illustrates that magic wands in this time period are a rarity. Just little things like that go a long way. So my final verdict for this one is, don't bother. It's not very well made. It has so many problems. There's so much shit that doesn't make any sense. Avoid this one. And that does it for Bright. I have one more movie to talk about, and we'll take a look at that in my next video. Till then, take care.